Hello my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good afternoon to each and every one of you. My name is Vance Dykes and today is day nine of our 33 day preparation of consecration to St. Joseph. As usual, before we get started, let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we come to you to give you thanks that we can meet again in virtual fellowship and especially as we prepare our hearts and minds and souls to be consecrated to St. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus. We ask you, O Heavenly Father, to please prepare our hearts and minds as we continue in our journey of preparation for consecration to St. Joseph. We ask you to help us to put all worries and all fears out of our mind for this brief period so we can focus on what's important. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. As I said, today is day nine of our 33-day preparation of consecration to St. Joseph. So if you would, please turn with me to page 29. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. He, God, saw it, saw to it that Joseph be born of the royal family. He wanted him to be noble even with earthly nobility. The blood of David, of Solomon, and of, and of all the kings of Judah flows in his veins. These are the words of St. Peter Julian Amard. In the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, we learn that St. Joseph is of the lineage of the Davidic kings. The Old Testament prophets always taught that the Messiah would come from the Davidic line. Mary, our spiritual mother, was most likely a descendant of King David as well, but her ancestry is not given in the New Testament. Matthew and Luke present the lineage of Joseph because the Davidic ancestry of the Messiah needed to be shown through the Father's line. Therefore, Matthew and Luke made a point of emphasizing that even though Jesus is not the biological son of Joseph, he is the son of Joseph by law. As such, Jesus has a legal right to be called a descendant of King David. The espousals between Joseph and Mary are an episode of great importance. Joseph was of the royal line of David, and in virtue of his marriage to Mary, would confer on the son of the virgin, on God's son, the legal title of son of David, thus fulfilling the prophecies. These are the words of Pope Benedict XVI. St. Joseph was king of the Holy Family. He was not the king of Nazareth, Israel, or anything like that. Since every man is the king of his home, St. Joseph was the king of his house. In the home of Nazareth, St. Joseph was king, Mary was queen, and Jesus was the prince, awaiting the kingdom prepared for him by his heavenly Father. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords, of course, but God's providential love desires that we acknowledge the kingship of St. Joseph in the Holy Family. Jesus himself gave us an example of the filial love and reverence we owe to St. Joseph, our spiritual father. St. Joseph is a noble lord. Many saints have often lovingly referred to St. Joseph as their Lord. St. Teresa of Avila was particularly fond of referring to St. Joseph as her Lord. In using this term, no saint intends to claim that St. Joseph is God. St. Joseph is not God. Saints sometimes use the, word, the term Lord when addressing St. Joseph out of respect, as is done when addressing dignitaries and rulers. Saints are pious and love to express their filial relationship to Mary and St. Joseph in devotional language. Mary, for example, is called Madonna. Madonna derives from the Latin Mia Domina, that is, My Lady, and is the feminine form of Lord. Since God has wanted to obey you, St. Joseph, allow me to be in your service, to honor you, and love you as my Lord and Master. These are the words of St. Alphonsus. Liguori. The whole church recognizes St. Joseph as a patron and guardian. For centuries, many different features of his life have caught the attention of believers. That is why, for many years now, I have liked to address, his, address him affectionately as our Father and Lord. These are the words of St. Jose Maria Escriva. Referring to St. Joseph as Lord has biblical foundations as well. Remember Joseph in the Old Testament, the one sold into slavery by his brothers? Well, Joseph's brothers end up calling him their Lord. See Genesis chapter 44. When they encounter him again and he saves their family from famine. For us, St. Joseph is more than a brother. He is our noble spiritual father. He is our loving spiritual father and Lord. 
Noble St. Joseph, I rejoice that God found you worthy of holding this eminent position whereby, established as the Father of Jesus, you saw the one whose orders heaven and earth obey subject, subjecting himself to your authority. These are the words of St. Alphonsus Liguori. <clears throat> Read Son of David, which can be found on page 139. Son of David, how great is the dignity of that son of David, Joseph, the husband of Mary. These are the words of blessed Gabriel Allegra. How great indeed is the dignity of Saint Joseph. In the litany of Saint Joseph, he is given the title, Noble Offspring of David. In some translations, the title is rendered as Renowned Offspring of David. Either way, the meaning is the same. Saint Joseph is a descendant of King David. He, St. Joseph, was the progeny of a, patriarchal, of a patriarchal, regal, and princely stock according to the direct line. From this, it is evident that the dignity of the patriarchs, kings, and princes terminated in Joseph. These are the words of St. Bernardine of Siena. St. Joseph has the blood of kings. What a noble father Jesus has in St. Joseph. What a noble father we have in St. Joseph. Our spiritual father is a descendant of royalty. Saint Joseph is the son of David. The title son of David is a messianic title. Jesus is called the son of David 17 times in the New Testament. Unlike Jesus, Saint Joseph is not the Messiah, but he is the only other person in the New Testament referred to as the son of David. Saint Joseph is called the son of David by the angel of God when he is instructed by the angel not to be afraid to take Mary into his home. See Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. Why does the angel call St. Joseph the son of David, especially in light of the fact that it is a title associated with the Messiah? The reason the angel does it is because St. Joseph needs to be reminded of his royal ancestry at a very crucial moment in salvation history. St. Joseph had recently discovered that his wife was pregnant, and in his humility, not fully understanding the origin of the child in her womb, he is about to take action by separating himself from her and the child. The angel had to come to remind St. Joseph of who he was and let him know what role he had been given by God in the coming of the Messiah, lest he walk away from divine mysteries and the vocational call he had been created to fulfill. In other words, God planned for his eternal son to be known by those around him as the son of a man of the house of David. That man was St. Joseph. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Otherwise, while troubled in mind, you may fail to understand this mystery. Saint Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. What you see in her is virtue, not sin. This is not a human fall, but a divine descent. Here is a reward, not guilt. This is an enlargement from heaven, not a detriment to the body. This is not the betrayal of a person, it is the secret of the judge. Here is the victory of him who knows the case, not the penalty of torture. Here is not some man's stealthy deed, but the treasure of God. Here there is a cause not of death, but of light. Therefore, do not be afraid. These are the words of St. Peter Chrysologus. St. Peter Chrysologus' words are beautiful and thought-provoking. His reflection presumes that St. Joseph was suspicious of Mary's faithfulness. But as we will see in the section, Just and Reverent Man, many other saints provide a much more noble and virtuous explanation for Joseph's behavior. These saints hold that St. Joseph was in reverential awe at what was happening in Mary's womb, and he considered himself unworthy to be her husband and the putative father of the child. He never suspected Mary of any wrongdoing whatsoever. On the contrary, St. Joseph knew he was in the presence of a great mystery. Humble and just, he planned to separate himself from Mary quietly in order not to get in the way of divine mysteries. Before he could take action, however, God sent his angel to remind Joseph of his royal lineage a lineage needed for the Savior to be considered a descendant of David. King David, St. Joseph's royal ancestor, had himself once taken a similar course of action. Considering himself unworthy to have the Ark of the Covenant in his city, King David sent the Ark away, see, see 2 Samuel chapter 6, for three months. To prevent something similar from happening in the marriage of Mary and St. Joseph, the angel reassured St. Joseph 
that God had chosen him to take the child and his mother into his home. St. Joseph was not to send the ark away. St. Joseph was not to do what King David had done. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. And now, let us pray the litany of St. Joseph, which can be found on page 233. The litany of St. Joseph. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph most just, pray for us. Joseph most chaste, pray for us. Joseph most prudent, pray for us. Joseph most courageous, pray for us. Joseph most obedient, pray for us. Joseph most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household, and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Thank you once again, my brothers and sisters in Christ, for joining me on another one of our virtual videos, our virtual journey of consecration to St. Joseph. Our video has now ended. Go forth now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.